Good morning, Swift. It's great to see you all. Today, we are continuing on the story of Joseph. Before we start, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for all your provision, for your guidance, for your love, for your mercy, for your healing uh, throughout all this time. Day by day, you always be with us. And Lord, thank you that during this time of pandemic, you are protect you 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 have been protecting us. You giving us health. You give us you are giving us the time to be with families. We you giving us uh, the opportunities to examine ourselves, to think about the future, to understand that we are really not in control on so many situations but you're the Lord that we can rely on because we call you Abba Father so Lord may you continue to bless all of us continue to heal all those need your healing continue to bridge on relationship continue to provide all our daily needs and at this time Lord may your Holy Spirit come upon us so that we can understand your word although the story of Joseph it happens thousands of years ago at that time people may act differently and also their um, their uh, Joseph is uh, in different con country they speak different languages but Lord, we know that the truth from your word is always the same. So Lord, let's able to grasp on beyond just a text. Let's able to get the deep meanings from your word and put it into our life so that we will follow and we we'll, are willing to obey your word to show the others we are the true disciples of Jesus and we love you by obeying your word. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. When I first came to China 13 years ago, I experienced, I experienced many culture shock. I try to adapt to, uh, to people how people practice their life in, in Shanghai. One thing I adjust uh, throughout all this year is about tips. Because in China, in China it seems like people are not familiar or they're not uh, put into day-to-day -day practice into uh, giving tips in restaurants, into services. But for what where we came from, I, I believe most of us, we used to give tips. And because it's tips is showing your gratitude to the service you're receiving. Uh, recently, I, I read an article, uh, it happened in July, just like a few weeks ago, in New Jersey. It really touches me because it talks about a customer who visit a restaurant they, their family used to go to, and they left a thousand US dollar as the tips to the restaurant. And besides just living a thousand dollar for a forty three dollar meal, um, the customer left a note. It say that um, it say in this way. It say, "Dear starving artist," which is the name of the restaurant. It say, "Dear starving artist, staff, and owners, thank you so much for working through this tough time." He's referring to the pandemic, uh, because restaurant they forced to close only can do delivery and pick up in the United States for a long period of time. And um, it really hurts a lot of business. And then they say, you are a big part of our OG. It refers to their district, uh, Ocean Grove community. My family looks forward to our mornings with you every summer. As, your, as my son said, our favorite spot since 2001. And also the notes continue to say, uh, they are Grateful for the staff, starving artist's delicious food, warm smile, 
and sweet atmospheres. And he requests the tips to be shared among all the staff. Um, and then the owner responds from the news reporter. The owner said, it's not only the, the, the money that really touched them. Is that in such tough time, because usually they say in July is the time they, they make it or break it for the year. This is the time they, uh, they it's major income for their business. And it been cut over 50% because, because of the pandemic and the regulation. So they received the tips. It's really encouraging. And they're so thankful about that. I think we all understand, right? When we receive a good service, we want to give tips to show our gratitude, uh, to show how graceful we are when, when we receive a good service. But what happened when someone treat you badly and someone treat you unfairly? Will you think about giving them good things or will you think about revenge to them because they're uh, being unfair to you? Today, we're going to take a look at the story of Joseph uh, when he finally met his um, brothers again. He finally met his brothers again. So uh, the story is long. It's in chapter 42 and, um, and uh, 38 verses. And it has lots of details on it. Again, I want to encourage you uh, after the sermon, if you have time, uh, spend the time to read through the whole chapter and try to dig into all the details. Today, I just want to give you an outline and some highlights on the story uh, first. Um, if you take a look at the outline of the story, it's basically two, uh, four parts. Uh, I'm going to go through that uh, with the highlight. First of all, Jacob sends 10 sons to Egypt. Uh, it starts with this because of the famine we mentioned last week that uh, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt because they are in the uh, third year of the famine, which probably they are out of food already in, uh, in Jacob's place. So Jacob told his son to go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. Then 10 of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin because he was af afraid that harm may come to him. So in here, Jacob sent 10 of his son, or you can say Joseph's brother is what the scripture said. But Benjamin, the, the youngest son, he was not going. Not because he's youngest, it was because he's the son of Rachel. And that's among the wives that Jacob had, uh, there's only two sons was from Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. From Jacob's point of view, as we mentioned many weeks ago, that he thought Joseph uh, was dead. He, he died. So he only have one son to left from um, Rachel. So he doesn't want him to go. Then the 10 of this 10 son went to Egypt. And um, later on in the scripture say, now Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who said, who sold grain to all his people. So when Joseph's brother arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. As soon as Joseph saw his brother, he recognized them. But he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Uh, we're gonna. I will explain more why Joseph did that. Uh, uh, when Joseph uh, is regarding Joseph want to test his brother, uh, so that's what happened. The first interview when the brothers encounter Joseph and Joseph recognized uh, those are his brother, but at the same time, his brother they didn't recognize Joseph. It was Joseph, and there's many reasons. First of all, because they probably never thought of Joseph still alive or they probably not they they will, will not think of Joseph will be the administrator that uh, they're talking to uh, and also because later on in scripture you find out when Joseph talked to his brother he talking through he talked it through an interpreter so Joseph speak in Egyptian and so the brother thought Joseph uh, was an Egyptian, not, they cannot associate Joseph as a Hebrew. Uh, so, so that's a, one of the reasons, that's 
many reasons that his brother uh, they did not recognize Joseph. Um, and then it said during this uh, first interview, first time they met again, then he Joseph remembered his dream about them, which is many weeks ago we talked about. He dreamed all the stars bowed down before him, and uh, and his so we're representing that his brother going to bow before him, and finally it happened. And um, but then Joseph talked to them and said, "You are spies. You have come to see where our land is unprotected." So this is what Joseph talked to them. And and then because of that, they went through a long conversation that his brother insists they are not spy. They just want to come to buy uh, grains. And this is the way that uh, Joseph Joseph able to get more details or uh, more updates from his brother about his father. Is it, is, was he still alive? And what happened to the family? And so... At, the end after the uh, at the end of that conversation, and Joseph said, "Okay, if you said you have twelve brothers instead of ten, so uh, and this is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Because you say you do uh, have a younger brother, so now I want to see youngest brother. He's not here, so I want to see him. That's basically what Joseph said, and." Originally, he said to them, send one of your number to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in prison. So originally, Joseph told them that. But later on, on the third day, then Joseph, Joseph put them in custody and he left. And then on the third day, so a few days later, Joseph said to them, do this and you will live. For I fear God, if you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison. So this was the difference, right? Originally, Joseph told them one can go and all the nine, the rest of the brothers, nine of them need to stay in prison. But three, day, three in, on the third day, so uh, Joseph said, one of you stay in the prison and the rest can go. So it's a little bit different uh, decision at that time. And the decision is he had uh, Simeon, Simeon taken from them and bound it before their eyes. So Simeon stays and all the other brothers go back. Um, so and and then according to the scripture at the end of uh, from verse 27 to 38 basically it talks about the they went they came to their father uh, Jacob in the land of Canaan they chose him all that had happened to them. So they, they told the conversation they have with Joseph and uh, to Joseph asking for the youngest son and they have all the grains and and they find that all the gold they they brought to Joseph still in their, back, in their uh, backpack basically uh, in their luggage or you can say. But uh, so they are scared, they are threatened, they fear, they don't know why they can get all the grain but they don't need to spend uh, a dollar on it, and now Simeon, their brother, was uh, is, was still in Egypt. Does that mean uh, they they know they're not going to get their brother back? I mean, they have so many concerns, uh, uncertainty, and so they have so much anxiety about this. They, but then when they told Jacob that they need to take the younger son, which is Benjamin, uh, Jacob responded. But Jacob said, "My son will not go down there with you. This brother is." His brother is dead, and he is the only one left. If harm comes to him on the journey you are taking, you will bring my gray head down to the grave in sorrow. So, I'll talk more about this in the next chapter, about uh, favoritism from uh, Jacob. But, but in here, if you take a look at it, I think it really hurt the brothers. If I if I'm one of those brothers here, that Jacob thing, he is the only one left. He is the only son he left. So 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 it's pretty it's hurting to the brothers. So who am who are we? I mean, Simon, he can stay in the in the prison of Egypt. I can go all the way to Egypt to get the grain, the food. 
uh, may, I would take the chance to be uh, in prison or get punished or even may die. But you like Benjamin so much that you don't let him go. So this is hurting, and but this is also the conclusion of uh, of the first visit to Jake uh, to Egypt. So Jacob he did not allow Benjamin to go with them again. So they they have the food, um, and they stay put in Canaan for for a period of time. So uh, this is the basic story outline of uh, chapter forty two. It talk about how they encounter. Uh, Joseph and how Joseph recognized his brothers. If you, uh, if you think about this story, and also like this is only chapter forty two, you know Genesis they have fifty chapters, so it means from forty two to forty nine, including fifty, uh, as a conclusion, it's it's focused on the reconciliation of Joseph and his family and how Joseph delivers family from the famine, and. And that's uh, the beginning of Exodus too, because it's explaining why uh, the Israelites they are they are in Egypt and they need to exile from Egypt. But but the thing about it, if you like to read fairy tale like the princess story, which I need to read to my daughter all the time, you find out like when princess when the princess meet the prince or the prince find the prince princess. And usually the story ended with they living happily ever after. So if we apply this to the story of Joseph, I think the story of Joseph should be ended from last chapter. Because we talk about Joseph being so, he went through all the struggle, he kept his integrity and he showed his faith, he walked with uh, God is walking with him and protecting him. And finally he became the second person in command. And he get the uh, all the wealth, the respect, and uh, also he married Asenov, uh, uh, which is um, given by uh, arranged by Pharaoh. So he have everything. He God delivered to him. So if I'm reading Joseph like the story, uh, like the princess story, then Joseph, I should the story should be ended. Joseph live uh, married to. As enough, and they living happily ever after. The end uh, of Genesis. But seems like from God's will, this is not the end. Because I don't, God doesn't mean to deliver Joseph in the way that he can forget the past, forget all the suffering, uh, forget about the the thing his brother did upon him. From God's point of view, reconciliation is more important. It's the thing that really settled in Joseph's life. And also, God has purpose in Joseph's life. God is planned to have Joseph to deliver Israel, Israelite to Egypt, to be saved, the whole tribe of uh, Israel uh, from the famine. And also, during the stay of uh, in Egypt, they, they become slaves. Um, and also the delivery, the exile of the Israel become a big experience for the whole tribe to encounter God. When we go to, uh, when we start studying ex Exodus, I will spend more time to explain this. Uh, if you take a look at Genesis, Genesis is talking about individual relationship with God, individuals. Abraham, Jacob, uh, Isaac, Joseph, and uh, even like Ab uh, even like uh, Noah, uh, Enoch, Adam. They are not. They are all individuals encountering encountered God, and they building relationship. But when we take a look at Exodus, it it was talking about the whole tribe, the whole tribe of chosen people that God. Is encountering them and building relationship as a nation to God. So, um, and the transition is is built upon is starting from Joseph's delivery of the tribe of the Israelite. So this is a very important story. This is because if we end it on Joseph become the second person in command, the story 
is not ended with God's will and God's plan. It never showed that. So that's why God wants to show furthermore than just that uh, Joseph being blessed. So let's take a look at what we can learn from this chapter. I went through the storyline pretty quick. I hope to uh, have time to read all the details. I think first of all, it touched me is the fulfillment of the dream, which I mentioned earlier. When Joseph met his brother it, and they bow in front of Joseph, that reminded him about the dream he had. And do you know how long it took for that? Oh, it's just a rough number, although I say 22 years more like exact, but actually it's rough because uh, it's based on the, uh, the, the, the facts we can find from Genesis. Uh, in Genesis chapter 37, Joseph, a young man of 17, this is the introduction of Joseph, and, and that's the time that he been sold as a, uh, a slave. And then Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So he met Pharaoh at age of 30. So he been, uh, been, he been a slave and also a prisoner totally uh, for 13 years before he become the second man in command. Uh, and then, remember last week I talked about uh, the dream, right? Seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. So in here, seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. And the seventh year of famine began. So it had seven years of abundance after Joseph met um, Joseph met Pharaoh. And uh, late in the later chapter, chapter 45, when Joseph finally reconciled with his brother and uh, forgive his brother, which we're going to talk more about uh, forgive, forgiving others' forgiveness. And, uh, but it said, one thing he mentioned, because five years of famine are still to come. So for a total, year, total of seven years, it means Joseph met his brothers in the third year, second to the third year, uh, depends how you define it. So two years of famine being gone. In the third year of the famine, he met his brothers. So uh, you add two more years onto it. So from seven, so, so if you add up all the numbers, when Joseph was 17 and he met Pharaoh at 30, and then seven years of, of abundance, two more years of famine. So it means total of 22 years, basically, that uh, Joseph had been separated from his brother. They never met each other for uh, 22 years. So, it, But the dream happened in the early days when they were still together. So it means the fulfillment of the dream took 22 years. And during this period, from what all we know, that Joseph went through up and downs in his life. It's not only just a little bumps, right? It, it went through a really dramatic and tra tragic stories. Uh, it happens only to uh, w one instant to one person already. But it happened to him like many times, um, being so as a slave, being uh, 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 wrongfully, falsely accused it by uh, his master's wife, and then his master sent him to prison, uh, having a hope that I mean, having a hope that he may it will bow out to the uh, cup bearer, and then he forgot Joseph. So all this discouragement, all this struggle, suffering is not easy to deal with. And but suddenly one day he he turned 180 degree, right? He turned totally differently. He became the second person in command. So this is what a this is like a roller coaster roller coaster ride for him. And for that 22 year, finally, for what he thought will, will maybe not going to happen, it happens. All his brother bowed before him. This is, I if I'm I was Joseph, I think it will bring up lots lots of feeling because maybe for so many years that Joseph think about okay, put all the history in my back now uh, to my back and 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 because I now uh, I'm living a good life so forget about the past forget about my original family and just move on usually I think that's how we also counseling others or how people uh, try to encourage others right don't look back just moving forward but now God bring back all those past onto him so he have to face it 
So for after 22 years, and he saw the fulfillment of the dream. And what he take uh, as a decision, because he had a choice at that time. God always likes to give us choice in critical, critical moments, like Adam. He need to make a choice uh, that when the snake tried to tempt him, right? He made the wrong choice, definitely. And, and many times, people need to make a choice. And like in Noah's time, in time of Jacob, and now the time of Joseph, he, he have a choice. And so he decided um, to, first of all, to test his brother. So that's why he said, but you must bring your youngest brother to me so that your words may be verified it and that you may not die. So he wanted to see how his brother uh, willing to take care of Benjamin, the youngest one, and also how his brother uh, keep their promises. Did they, did they ever change? Uh, did they still careless about their brother? Or do they, did they still hate uh, the, son, the sons from Rachel? Or, or what happens? But I think Joseph never expect this. So when he asked the the youngest brother to, to be brought to uh, to Egypt, then he heard the brother talk to themselves in front of him because they thought that Joseph would not understand Hebrews. Uh, so he say, they said to one another, surely we are being punished because of our brother. They were referring to Joseph at that time. We saw how distressed we was when he pleaded with us for his life, but we would not listen. That's why this distress has come on us. Raven replied, that, didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? It refers to Joseph. But you won't listen. Now we must give an accounting for his blood. They did not realize that Joseph could understand them since he was using an interpreter. So Joseph heard this. I don't think he ever expected that. He, he tried to test uh, and test his brother and also try to see how they react in this way. Are they still loving? Are they able to take care of one another and also uh, concerned about the, the youngest one? But they never. he probably never thought of they still remember what they did 22 years ago to him. And they and they look at it as a sin and now the punishment come upon them. So I think it aroused all the feeling. So uh, after that in the scripture it say, Joseph, he turned away from them and began to whip. He cried, finally, um, throughout, throughout all this uh, tough life. I, it never mentioned in the scripture he cried, he feels sad, he's upset. It, if you pay attention to the scripture, he never mentioned any about his emotion until now, he whip. Oh, I understand. Probably he whip is not because he feels sad. Uh, probably it's mix of emotions together. So he whip, and this is the respond, and then he understand. Uh, his brother have a sense of guilt, uh, and and also have maybe some sort of regret on that, and then. So, uh, but I look at the story in this way. Maybe in the story we think, oh, up to now is how Joseph deal with uh, the brothers, or how brother now they 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 is a time that they they going to learn in in a tough way that what they have done to his brother. And maybe also we thought about like Joseph tested the brothers. But from what I see from scripture, I think it's also a test from God. God had tested Joseph. It say now Joseph, uh, first of all, it say now Joseph was the governor of the land and the person who set, who sold grain. That's why I mentioned earlier. So what's it mean? It means Joseph have two roles at that time. One is administrator uh, to take care of all the operation and business administrative thing, governing the whole land. But also at the same time, he's handling the, uh, uh, it's controlling the economy, right? He, he decided who they can sell, they can sell the grain to and, and making money and from selling, from selling this, uh, the grains. So you have two roles and two roles so respectful. So, and also we, we 
reflecting. Now he have power and authority. And in the meantime, probably he, he gained a lot of wealth uh, because of his role. And um, for what I and also let's take, take further uh, take a look at furthermore. And as soon as Joseph saw his brother, he recognized them. And then they say, although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. So think about all this, and and uh, think about all this. That first of all, Joseph, he is a uh, is a governor, so he get all the power, he get all the money, and then he was in a really good position to revenge because even his brother didn't recognize him. So he know who they are, who they were, but they don't know his Joseph. So he can play all the tricks upon them. So remember, I say earlier when we go to a restaurant we receive good service we want to give tips to show our grateful uh, to our uh, to how I feel the graceful thing they did upon uh, serving us so the more tips it mean more appreciation but what happens when people do it uh, being unjust to you doing unfair things to you giving you suffering and when you have a chance what do you want to do mostly maybe revenge some people they may have a, we can say more spiritual, uh, more graceful. Maybe you say, okay, I don't bother you. You don't bother me. Don't take advantage of me anymore. But in here, I think God tests Joseph on his integrity, because you can you can be humble, you can ask for God's mercy, you can be nice when you are under suffering, when you have needs to. Uh, from God, when you need God's help, you 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 may able to humble yourself. I I met so many people that when they uh when they are poor, uh when they uh, like looking for jobs, when they in a tough situation in their family, they they willing to follow God's will more because they want to get themselves out of the situations. They finally humbled it themselves. But one things that go smoothly, they get a good a good job. They they uh, earn a lot. They, they they have a really enjoyable family. Um, they may forget God. They may forget about God, and and also like uh, and also when it's easy to say I'll forgive someone when I in a tough situation, but when you have everything in control. A certain extent, right? Uh, you have money, you have power, you have a good life, you have everything. And the one who being unjust, unjust to you, who hurts you so much, now begging in front of you. What are you going to do? This has happened to Joseph. And Joseph picked the right things. Joseph did the right thing. He picked the right choice and do the, did the right thing. He forgive them. He reconciled with them. It's not only like, okay, I forgive you, but don't bother me. I'm trying to protect myself. I don't want to get fur get uh, hurt further in the future. So maybe we should keep distance. No, he talked about, he did reconcile with his brother. And this is the character of God. And this is the, this is the way that God wants us to, to have. Because uh, God did that upon us. When we were sinners, God forgive us. And Jesus came to reconcile us with God. So uh, as today we, we are going to predict the Holy Communion, I want to read a, a different scripture to you to remind ourselves that reconciliation is what God like us to do. When we reconcile with others, it doesn't mean that we, we only forgive them and then, okay, set apart. We're not related anymore. I don't want to get hurt anymore. But when we learn from Joseph, um, God tests Joseph to show that Eve no, is truly above all situation that Joseph able to upkeep his integrity in God. And that's a true um, disciples should do above all situation. Just hold on to the truth an attitude, the principle from God. So in here, I want to show you how Jesus become uh, uh, a person to reconcile 
peoples and to God. It say in Ephesians chapter 2, 11 to 18, it say, Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and call uncircumcised, by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostile, hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the Lord with his commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in him one new humanity out of the two, thus take, making peace. So it, what he's trying to say in here is that Jesus came so to break the barrier of Gentiles and the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jews, uh, Jewish people. So they, they should, they, he broke the barrier. So no longer calling uncircumcised and circumcision. So the, the two become one and because and also and in one body to reconcile both of them to God. So they reconcile each other and also Jesus reckon, most important Jesus reconciles them both of them to God through the cross through his uh, sacrifice. He reconciled all of us Jews non-Jews uh Jews Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, how to describe it. But he, Jesus, on the cross, through the cross, that he uh, he reconciles us with each other and God, and by which he put death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through, for the, for through him, we both have access to to the Father by one Spirit. So we all receive one Spirit and we all call in our God, our Father, and we become brothers and sisters. So in here, I want to remind all of us that many times we talk about humbleness. Maybe it's easy when we're facing challenges like the pandemic, we're suffering, we're helping each other. But when you have your, when you feel like you're capable, you have your power, you have your authority, you have money, you can do what you like to do, you feel like God is in your side all the time, and, and, and now I can do whatever I like. Think about, think about what God would really like us to do. To look after others, to reconcile with the one you hate or the one who hates you, to do things in godly way, the humble, humble way to sacrifice yourself so that you can bring people to God. I think this is a higher character, a higher standard that God wants to us to exercise in our daily life. And he showed it through his sacrament, uh, through his set, uh, sacrifice on the cross. He is God. He sacrificed himself on the cross so that we can reconcile to God. I think that's the important lesson we need to learn. Especially when we talk about Joseph today and the beginning of a uh, reconciliation he has with uh, he had with, with his brother. At the same time it's the week that we have holy communion. Let's all think what Jesus has done upon us and what we should do upon others because we received it this abundance from God. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for wonderful grace that you show us what love really means. You also you also show us uh, the actions we should take if we truly love you and the others. Lord, let us remember what Jesus has done upon us. As what the scriptures say, we do this in remembrance of him. Lord, let us transform ourselves through partaking the Holy Communion. Not that we understand that not that the the cup and the and the bread have supernatural power, but it's that the cup and the bread remind us and also symbolize that Jesus had sacrificed himself for us. So that we need to love you in the same way. 
We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. As what the scriptures say, that we need to do this in remembrance of, in remembrance of Him. And in the Last Supper, Lord pick up the bread and say, this is the bread. He sacrificed it for us. So let's partake the bread in remembrance of Him. And the scriptures say after the meal that he pick up the cup and say this is the blood I shed for you. This is a new confidence he established for us. And we do this in, in remembrance of him. Let's partake the cup. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Thank you so much for wonderful grace. Thank you so much for sending sent for for sending your son to this world even way before we were born to have your salvation available for us. Lord, as we call you the Father, help us to really calling our others brothers and sisters from our heart let's love others by loving our brother and sisters let's love the others because we all call you our father let's remember what Jesus had done for us not only once a month but in a daily basis let's make all the decision in remembering what Jesus has done for us. Let's make a decision in remembering how Jesus treated us. Lord, let us be the little Christ to show the others that you are living in our life. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen.